In October, I received this email from Synth Anatomy asking if I'd like to attend an event in Germany with 25 other Synth YouTubers. Now, this was being sponsored by the music company Tomon. Now, for my American viewers, don't feel bad if you've never heard of them because, well, I hadn't either. But uh, apparently they're a pretty big presence in Europe. Basically, I was being offered an all expenses paid trip from Dallas to Germany where I would get to meet a bunch of other YouTubers. So I thought about it for a week or so and I finally decided that I would go. Well, things didn't work exactly to plan. Due to a slight miscommunication, I ended up missing my flight to Frankfurt so we had to reschedule it for the following day. Now, the original plan was that I would land in Frankfurt and then catch a connecting flight to Nuremberg. Then they were going to pick us all up in a bus and take us to Treppendorf. And well, that happened, except for me. <laughs> in fact, um, I was sent this video from all the guys who had already arrived uh, Well, I was just going to the airport. Unfortunately, this meant my trip would be a little more complicated. However, it turns out I wasn't alone in missing my flight. As I was flying into Frankfurt, I got an email saying that Jade Wee from Dallas Jamming had just arrived as well and had my train ticket. So as I got off the plane, I had to go find her at the bag claim. Then we had to go catch a train, and we rode the train from Frankfurt to Wurzburg, where we were picked up by a Tomon employee and then uh, driven the rest of the way to Treppendorf. Now, the thing is, Treppendorf is a tiny little town in the middle of nowhere. And as you can see here in the satellite photo, the Tomon facility itself is practically 90% of the town. In fact, I don't even think there's a hotel in the city. So actually, we stayed in a hotel in a nearby town called Reichmannsdorf. It was a really nice hotel, and uh, there was a surprise waiting for us right there in the lobby. Hey, check this out. It's got all of our names on it. Hey, look, I'm up at the top. I'm like the most important one here. <laughs> but it's uh, alphabetical order, isn't it? Is or it? No, no, we can't. <laughs> well, I can always dream. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, we all met for breakfast every morning at the hotel, uh, which was a good opportunity to get to know all of the other YouTubers. After breakfast, uh, we'd all gather in the lobby, and then a bus would come pick us up and take us to the Tomon facility. Guten Morgen. <laughs> of course, um, you can tell who all the cool kids are because they sit at the back of the bus. A few minutes later, we arrived at the Tomon facility, and um, it is certainly an impressive place. Um, they have a store which is open to the public, and it is like a maze of smaller interconnected buildings with uh, multiple floors each. And then uh, further out you can see the warehouse and the distribution center. They not only have every musical instrument imaginable, but they have at least an entire room dedicated to each kind of instrument. Here's the percussion room. They even have test sticks for you to try stuff out with. I haven't played a real drum set in like 20 years, so I thought I'd give it a try. It's considerably more physical exercise than I remember it, maybe because I'm in my 40s now. They had a giant two-story room with just guitars. Of course, I have no idea how to play a guitar. Um, although if I ever had the time, I wouldn't mind learning the violin. And of course, they had tons of keyboards, all modern keyboards, of course. And um, here's something you don't see every day. This is called the Alpha Piano. It's actually electronic, and uh, Anders gave it a try. But check out the price tag on this thing. It's over 33,000 euros. <laughs> I tried playing my rendition of Stones on it. Of course, where the real action was, was outside where they had these tents set up. Now, these things were bigger than they looked. Uh, inside they had vendors here from all the major synthesizer companies such as Roland, Korg, Moog, Yamaha, and so on. And um, Oh, and I also met some other really cool people there. I love that shirt. And I love your shirt as well. <laughs> it was really nice to meet you, finally. <laughs> We were encouraged to play with the synthesizers and then uh, they could book us an hour time slot to take them away to a little private studio and do a review on them. There were a couple of problems with this though. Uh, for one thing, there were some really neat products here. Uh, for example, I really liked the Korg Minilog, but none of these products really fit with my 8-bit theme. The second problem was that one hour is really not enough time to get to know something as complicated as a synthesizer and do a proper review on it. 
But I am going to give you a quick overview of two of the keyboards that I liked. Uh, the first is the Yamaha Reface CS. And this is basically a modern version of the Yamaha CS01, which I reviewed a while back, uh, which was originally made in 1982. Okay, so here is the Yamaha um, Reface CS, and uh, this is a, it's a really small little keyboard. It um, you know it's uh, it almost has the same toy like size to it. It's very very easy to fit this on my desk. So uh, I, yeah, I'd probably like to have something like this at home. But uh, it has actually two little speakers in it. They're, they're not terribly loud, but they're actually just fine for like if you were gonna you know, you know set this on your desk and just just play around with it. You weren't actually gonna be recording anything from it at the time. But uh, you can actually turn the speakers off by power cycling it and holding down the D2 key. Yeah, now we got nothing, but I'll have to plug my um, audio lines back in. So, um, you know, one of the things I really like about this, uh, you know, there are no preset instruments on this keyboard. I mean, you have to um, pretty much design your own sound. Now, right now, I have it set on literally like the most basic primitive form of sound, which is just a, a basic square wave. Um, you know, so uh, you can change the octave. You know, this sounds very much like a PC speaker would on like a, a 1980s or early 90s era DOS computer, you know, like a you know, good old Space Quest. <laughs> but, um, you know, you can uh, change the uh, waveform to like a sawtooth and uh, a sine wave. You can you can do all kinds of stuff here. So uh, you can start with the, just the basic ADSR envelope. And I love the way they've got these um, these sliders are just ADSR. I mean, you just can't get any simpler than that. So uh, this uh, this is the attack. So that's that's a really slow attack. Let's see, uh, and then the, your delay. Then uh, your sustain, so. See, you can get a little bit of sustain on there. Now, this keyboard is uh, both polyphonic or monophonic, and right now it is set in mono mode. So it behaves very much like a, uh, like a monophonic keyboard, but you can put it into polyphonic mode. And then you can have, um, I think it has eight voices, they told me. So, um, and then you can do all kinds of crazy stuff, so uh, you can change the texture of your sound. And uh, you can modulate it. You know, and, and of course you can do this with every different waveform. And you know, you got all kinds of like a little effects you can add to it. Like a delay. Need some nice deep bass out of that. the old uh, song from the Commodore 64. Uh, you know, so the thing about the keyboard like this is, I mean, you're not really going to um, be able to sit here and play, you know, like a whole song like you would sit in front of a piano or something. And, you know, typically this is a keyboard you're going you're gonna to make parts of songs with. And I don't have the ability to do like a multi-track recording right here uh, with the equipment I have. But, you know, if I could take this home with me, I could, I could, you know, make a song with like uh, four or five different tracks all from this keyboard. And and because I can uh, do all the different octaves, you know, you, you got the low and you could go all the way up to the high. I mean, you could, you could make a pretty sophisticated song with this. Just, it's really kind of hard to demonstrate under this circumstance uh, because I can only play like one piece at a time. But it's still, it's a really neat little keyboard and I'm uh, glad I got the opportunity to play with it. I wasn't the only one taken with the Reface CS. Uh, Rachel Collier also spent some time with it. And Dom Sigalis also appreciated its ability to make Nintendo-like sounds. <laughs> I 
I also wanted to do a review on the Yamaha Reface DX, which is like a modern version of the DX7. However, <laughs> Anders was hogging it up most of the time. Uh, he actually asked him for a little corner of a room where he could set up a little studio and create some music. In fact, um, all the background music that you've heard in this video so far has been the music he created from this little corner. However, I did get a chance to talk about it with Anders some. I uh, picked out five keyboards that we I'll, I'll show you later. And I set up, set up this little mini studio of mine that we'll, we'll show. Um, so I made a song <laughs> that I figured figure we could feature and uh, talk about. And uh, well, I, I don't know, let's just uh, see how it sounds. Shall we? <laughs> so of course, we have the, uh, the classic piano. Just like a DX7. It does. And of course, I guess that's what they were going for. Exactly. You know, actually, I reviewed um, the CS version of this earlier, but Anders has been hogging the DX the whole time I've been here. So Sorry. I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't been able to do a review on it, but this is actually like a really cool little keyboard. I mean, it is really cool. It's probably one of my favorite here. It is. Uh, it has, where was it? We have the bass sounds. That's classic. There's also the... Uh, you definitely yeah. have to find those tubular bells. Yeah. Everybody's got to hear the, the DX tubular yeah, bells. Yeah, of course. Good, yeah, good call. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> there it is. There we are. This is a classic. This is, uh, this is uh, Kyria Eleison with uh, Mr. Mister. They use well, this song. Sound. Yeah, they also use that song in a lot of Enya stuff. Enya and they, does, and they yeah. use that sound in the Taco Bell theme. They use that song at the beginning of, um, what was that, uh, the Top Gun theme? Yeah, of yeah. course. Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> they use that sound in a lot of different things. Well, we'll go from here, so. Okay. If you want to see the fully edited performance, uh, you can find it on Anders' own channel. Of course, I was still on a mission to find something more in line with my 8-bit theme, so I asked Tilo to show me around. Okay, also hier haben wir ein sehr schönes Keyboard, das kann äh, wunderbare Piano Sounds machen und äh, es kann auch Orgel spielen zum Beispiel. Ja, aber uh, das ist zu groß. Haben Sie etwas, uh, etwas uh, einfaches, uh, etwas uh, Vielleicht Spielzeug für Kinder. Ja, Spielzeug für Kinder. Ich gucke gerade mal. Da, ich glaube, da hinten haben wir was. Lassen wir uns doch darüber gehen. So, das ist die äh, Spielzeugabteilung, unsere Kinderabteilung. Einmal das und einmal ja, das. Ja, aber äh, ich habe schon eins. Sie haben schon eins? <lacht> Sie sind schon ein Benutzer davon. Ja. Haben Sie etwas ich habe, ein, ich habe eine Idee, ich habe eine Idee. Kommen Sie mit. Was haben wir denn? Ich habe dies, äh, dies gesehen, aber nicht gespielt. Nicht gespielt? Darf ich? Ja klar, Ein Moment. Okay. Ähm, jetzt kommen wir zu euch. Okay? Es ist nicht elektronisch, aber äh, interessant. Ja. Uh, viele Farben. Äh, Ich mag diese. Dann sieht es gut aus. Ich denke zum Probieren. Und äh, da reinblasen. Und dann. Interessant. Das ist toll. Das gefällt Ihnen? Sollen wir es einpacken? Ja, ja. Das Wunderbar. Ist interessant. Wie viele kostet etwas? So, you'll have to wait until the end of the video to see what I ended up doing with one of these. So, I'm trying to find Sam because I need to ask him about Furbies. I think I finally found him. Oh, hey, man. How's it going? What? 
on earth are you doing oh, in here? Well, you've sort of seen it in a slightly early phase, but basically, if you follow it down there, we're actually um, trying to get a break a break of world record of like the most pedals plugged in at once, and we're hoping for like 450. Simon's been working constantly in here, trying to wire it all up and stuff, but it's just so many batteries, so many batteries. How's it going? It's, um, so yeah, it's um, it's taking longer than we thought, right? Nope. Look, you, you Actually thought. Not. Do you no, think no. it's going well? I think this is going way faster than expected. Sam, I'm sorry to distract you from your crazy science experiment. What do you want now? <laughs> <laughs> but I saw your video on the Furby organ, and it's mm -hmm. really inspired me because I, I was thinking, wow, I would love to take four or five Furbies and hook them up to the Commodore 64 makes yeah. like some kind of tracker oh. where I can make each one like its own voice and then you could make a like pre-recorded That would be music. pretty amazing. But, but I, can I, you tell me the secret to Furby hacking? Yeah, so Furby you know. hacking. <laughs> you know, because I remember we, we like, so do you, do you want it to be quite musical? Yeah. yeah. A musical Furby hack is, I mean, after many, many um, play hours of sitting, scratching my head, looking at the inside of Furbies, it's, it's I've realized it's very hard to actually get a, a definite musical predictable note out of them. And it was one of the big problems of actually building the Furby organ is you, you, you can't predict what noise it's going to make. And it's just awfully unpredictable. And I'd like, but I don't... I don't know how you would go about doing it to make it sound like I can imagine you want them to go like oh, da, 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 yeah, beautifully tracked. Song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like the Furby organ might be able to do it. Like you could probably just I ship that over to you. <laughs> but like um, doing it, so you want them to change? Do you want the, cert, the separate Furbies to change the pitches, right? Yeah. So they're singing in tune and going up and down. Like I, I a spent a choir of Furbies. A little choir. Sing it. Each one can sing its own little tune. And yeah, yeah. Well, this might this might make you feel a bit sad, but the the actual technical limitations that I found to make the Furby organ as musical as I wanted, I actually had to grab a lot of the audio, uh, well, from the the samples from the. Um, from the ROM uh, to uh, uh, freeze them and put them onto an Arduino because they were so unpredictable. So the actual IOWs were captured and the uh, Furby is kind of talking on its brain but the actual sound to make it always in tune with what it's supposed to be was actually transferred over to an Arduino which might break your heart. And it's not a secret, <laughs> trust me, it's not a secret, but how do you feel? You are crushing my dreams. <laughs> I, I've been planning this for months. And I just like, haven't got around to it yet because I was going to ask you how to do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, at, I'm. well, the problem, yeah, it's like, but I'm not saying that it's impossible, but me with my, with what I've done and what I've tried and a lot of people have tried is, it's hard to actually make them very musical without any, like, intervention of other circuits. <sighs> Well, any other toys you can think of? That well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, there's lots of other toys from well, from the area that you are interested in, which was, you know, 70s to late 90s, probably. Maybe even further, yeah. right? <laughs> 70s and 80s, mostly. 70s but, and but, 80s. But, you know, I'm, I'm up for anything modern if it would fit the bill. Mm -hmm. Something I can interface with my C64. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, circuit bending-wise, I think the best thing for you to find is something that when you hit the button, it always plays the same thing. Like, bah, bah, like a speaker spell, for instance. You've got the A, A, A. And if you actually adjust the clock speed of that machine, you can actually get quite a large range out of that. So you could probably get like three or four octaves from the clock speed of it, and then you hit it, it's like, ooh, 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 ooh. and it, the more, depending on the more, um, the, well, just the more voltage that you're putting into it. So maybe I could hook four or five speaking spells up to my C64. I think that could be possible, but Maybe I could time. draw little faces on them so that they, <laughs> oh, could each you, could be their own voice. Could you program little smiley faces on the, on the screens? I don't think so. <laughs> Not really a resolution there. Oh yeah, there isn't. Are they? They're eight? They're segment displays. Yeah, they're segment, aren't they? Uh, but but needless to say, you could probably use a Furby. I mean, there might be a way. It's in my head now. The question is, I might have to answer it a little bit later on in time. But like, you can probably turn them into like nice rhythm machines because they do make nice like. You know, you could. But getting them to a definite perfect tone. The the only way that I got was every single or Furby was a separate note. That's the thing. So that's how the Furby organ works. Is like that C, C sharp, and all the Furbies have their own okay, yeah. song. That's probably a little bit more work than I would want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of work. But I mean, you know, and I, I, I don't think Furbies will deal well with retro brighting. They might get a little bit clogged. <laughs> Actually, I wonder if you retro brighten, will they get bleached? <laughs> 
I don't know. <laughs> so I heard you did a crazy experiment yesterday with patch cables. Ah, yes, yes. Go? So, um, well, at Tom and here, we've, we've been kind of just uh, kept on asking, well, like, things that we didn't think, we thought that people would say no to. Like, I can't believe they've, they've indulged us in every crazy thing. I know. Especially you, of all the, yeah, <laughs> the things mean, you've asked. Like, the things that you guys are doing, dude, you set up a, set up a studio. Yeah. And then being able to compose songs and, like, on loads of awesome equipment, which is pretty damn cool. But, yeah, yesterday we, um, we ordered a kilometer, nearly a kilometer's worth of guitar cables. And we added, um, you know, the couplers you can, add, the adapters that you can just stick them together. And we, we started in the um, amp room, which is just over there. And we walked all the way up to the top of Tom and all the way down. And then we walked around it, kept on building the jack cable to see how long it would take until the guitar signal would just deteriorate to a mush or just, you know, kind of fade away. And we managed to get pretty much a, nearly a kilometer and get back to the amp, start playing, it sounded exactly the same. <laughs> exactly the same. It was mad, and it took a long time <laughs> patching it together. But yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I've taken enough of your time. I'll let you get back to your crazy experiment, and I'll check your channel in a few days and see... The, the silliness, and yeah, How likewise, I'll be checking, because that. <laughs> see, we keep on bouncing into each other, and we're, we're all, everybody's always just so busy and flustered with different ideas that they've got. It's like, which idea to focus on, so it's quite amazing. But it was really nice meeting you as well. Yeah. Thank you very see much. It. He found one! Back at my hotel, there were a few surprises. Uh, for one thing, they left me some Treppendorf beer. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't drink, so I ended up giving this to somebody else. They also left me some candy cables. I mean, look, I've never had candy before with my YouTube channel name on it. But dang, this stuff is great. Mmm. It tastes like, like sour gummy worms. Sam brought his electronic fart machine with him too, uh, but the real surprise is that behind our hotel was a castle, and uh, the owner offered to take us on a tour, but it was at night time and uh, very dark in there, and uh, it had a lot of long, dark, creepy hallways with portraits hanging on them. I had to keep cracking Futurama jokes. You like being dead. But we didn't run into any ghosts, nor did we run into the portrait of Commodore 64. Uh, anyway, it was still a neat surprise, and uh, the ceilings in most of the rooms had really amazing artwork and designs. And on the last day, we put something together with those melodicas. Unfortunately, I can't show you all of the things that we did here as uh, the video would be like two hours long. And I'm even having to cut out the review I did on the Korg Minilog, but uh, trust me, it is a cool piece of equipment. But the best part of this trip really wasn't playing with the equipment, it was getting to meet all of the other people. As a YouTuber, it's difficult to find other people to talk with that understand what the struggle and experience is like. I mean, if you work at a bank, for example, you work with other people, so you share your daily experience with other people. But YouTubers often work alone, and so we don't have any co-workers to share our experiences with. So uh, this was a refreshing opportunity. And I very much appreciate the opportunity to share this rather long video with you guys. And um, a big thanks to Tomon and Synth Anatomy for inviting me to the event. So uh, that about wraps it up. So uh, as always, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.